By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Deventer, the Netherlands, for the Knights of Thorn 10th edition tournament, COT 10. And this is the longest running old school Magic the Gathering tournament in the Netherlands. So I'm really happy to show you action from this event. This is round number one. And in this round, we see Robbie taking on Tristan. Robbie is playing Urnum on Ice, a deck that I know very well because it's the favorite deck of my brother. And he is taking on Tristan. And Tristan has an interesting pile of cards, I have to say. He's playing, I've called it Guardian's Song because it's got a Guardian Beast in there, three in total, and also a Titania Song. So it's a very interesting pile. But before before I show you the deck photos, I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go first to the games, check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games, so if you click on there, it'll take you straight to the action and in that same description below, you can also find more information about the rule set and you can find the link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you enjoy the content that I make, please consider becoming a patron. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks for all the info. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to start with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of Roby and his Urnum on Ice list. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Robby. So this is really your Urnum on Ice list. And Urnum on Ice is named after two cards, the Urnum Jinn and the Ice Storm. So the Urnum Jinn is a 4-5 creature from Arabian Nights for one green and three. So that's great value, great bang for your buck. And the Ice Storm, the other card the deck, deck is named after, is a sorcery that can destroy any target land for one green and two. It's basically the green uh, Stone Rain. And of course... Um, you know, Ice Storm is really an old school card because it has never been reprinted after Unlimited. So what's so good about this deck is that it, it's a tempo deck. I, I see it as a mid-range tempo deck. At the start of the game, right, you want to deploy maybe one of your Moxen, your Sol Ring if possible, or your Lanower Elves, and then turn two, hopefully you can play your Ice Storm, you can take care of the land of your opponent. And from that point forward, you're kind of ahead of the game, right? Because you've got an extra mana with Lanower Elves, and your opponent probably doesn't because of that Ice Storm. So you're two lands up, two mana up, I should say. And when you're two mana up, you can really start accelerating. You can start playing out your Urnum. You can start playing out your Sarah. In between there, maybe you can play out your Sylvan Library, which is, you know, in this deck, you want to use that quite aggressively. You just want to quickly draw through your deck, keep the pressure on your opponent. And of course, you have that white element in the deck that can solve early early uh, on problems. You know, you've got your Decent Chance and your Swords. It, it, it's so good, you know, if you get stuck, you can just use that white removal power, you know, to get around it. What I like about this edition of the deck, because I'm looking, of course, at differences between other Urnum on Ice decks that I've seen, is the inclusion of the Preacher. I think it's really cool. We also see a recall here in the list of Roby and other Brain Geyser, for example. So that's an interesting change, right? I mean, Brain Geyser, of course, two blue and X to draw X cards. It's a card that's super popular, played in most Urnum on Ice lists. We see that Robbie has made a different decision, gone for a recall. And I guess recall can maybe be better in certain circumstances because with recall, you know what you're what you're getting back out of your graveyard. With Brain Geyser, you don't. But I mean, my gut instinct is that Brain Geyser is better, but that's why it's so interesting to see Robbie making that different choice. I mean, I love to see that. I guess one of the advantages is that a recall doesn't require a double blue in the casting cost. Because when we're looking at the blue cards, we see the recall and the power cards. He only needs single blues to cast them. Also, we see a time twister here in the deck, which in a way I think makes sense. Because when you play a time twister, what are you going to get back? Probably your swords and your disenchants. Because you've swords the creature of your opponent, they're removed from the game. So the time twister is not going to give them back to your opponent. So these are like nice little tricks and synergies in the deck of Robi here. So I think it's pretty cool. It's a cool list and uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to do against the Guardian Beast list of his opponent. And here we see the deck of Tristan. Now I find this really an interesting pile of cards. First of all, a lovely deck photo, Tristan. And uh, what I like about this is he's playing heavily on Guardian Beast and also that combination with Titania Song is really cool. So Guardian Beast, maybe that's a good card to start with. This is a 2-4 creature from Arabian Nights for 1 black and 3. So it's kind of the casting cost of a giant spider, right? In the same power toughness. Uh, but that is where the resemblance stops because the ability of this creature is insane. As long as it's untapped, so that's important. When you tap it, it no longer works. But as long as it's untapped, all your non-creature artifacts cannot be destroyed. 
and they cannot be enchanted. So that's really insane. You cannot play a steel artifact on them, but you can also not disenchant them. They've got indestructible. And that works together really well, of course, with a lot of non-creature enchantments like a gem they told me you cannot get rid of it as long as you've got the guardian beast but it works together really well with the chaos orb because chaos orb is a card that you pay one you flip it on the target when you hit it the target is destroyed and at the end of the flip also the chaos orb destroys itself but that doesn't happen when you've got the guardian beast on the board the chaos orb stays it doesn't destroy itself it is tapped though so you've got to wait until your next turn to untap it and use it again but still guardian beast chaos orb it's a killer combo and it usually always wins you the game. Um, and then we also have a Titania's Song in the deck. Now Titania's Song in this deck, I think it's super cool. It's one green and three to cast this enchantment. It reads, all non-creature artifacts become creature artifacts with power and toughness equal to their casting cost and they lose all other abilities. So for example, a Jam Day Tome, it will turn into a 4-4 vanilla and so will your Icy Manipulators, your Flower Stones 2-2s, your Soul Ring 1-1, etc right so if you time your titania song right you can have a huge army of books and and orbs and even a mirror that that will turn into a six six that that'll be a monster you know um so you can start attacking with your artifacts i always like that idea of you know you're a wizard and all of a sudden all your objects come to life and they start attacking the opposing wizard and you're looking at it and you've got like a whole army of, of books and orbs and mirrors, you know, it's, it's kind of insane. I, I like that. I like to visualize that. But um, it's also very powerful. And one of the cool things about Titania's Song is if you disenchant it, um, the effect of the Titania Song lasts until the end of the turn. So it's not like you attack in combat, your opponent disenchants your Titania Song, and all your artifacts stop being creatures. It doesn't work that way. So that's one of the things that makes Titania Song so good, right? If you time it right, you know that you can attack at least a turn when it comes into play with all your non-creature artifacts. Um, and then we also see um, another one-off here in the deck, The Abyss. I think the Abyss is quite interesting here because he's playing it in combination with Guardian Beast. That's kind of a non-bow, but I guess, you know, you're of course in control of when you play out your, your permanent, so he can choose to play the Abyss when it helps him and to not play it when he's got a Guardian Beast out, right? That kind of makes sense. Um, the Abyss, of course, does work together really well with the Suchis. Um, and because this deck has the three Ices and the three Gemini Tomes and the Titania Song plan and the Guardian Beast plan, this is really more a controlling deck than the deck of Roby, and that's exactly where I'm a little bit worried because if Roby goes too quick, I mean, it's really got that aggressive tempo deck, then it's going to be tough for Tristan, but I think if Tristan can, you know, make the make the game last a little bit longer, I think he can get out on top, but it's it's going to be a tough match, I feel, for, for Tristan. In my opinion, I would say 60 towards Ernam on Ice and 40% towards uh, Tristan. But feel free to completely disagree with me, by the way. I've been wrong plenty of times. That's just my take on the matter here in round number one at the Knights of Thorn. Talking about that, let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. Robby sitting on the left with his Ernam on Ice deck and on the right we have Tristan with his Guardian Beast deck. Look at that, taking a mulligan, going down to six here. So not the best start for him, I guess, but hopefully those six are good. Starting with a forest, has an Elves of Deep Shadow and also a Birds of Paradise, I believe, has potential green one drops. There is a Savannah, look at that, into a Lana where this is the opening Robbie wants, potentially followed by an Ice Storm in uh, turn two. We'll just have to wait and see. There is probably, I believe, this is a Plains. Tapping a Plane, what are we gonna see? There's a Soul Ring. Tapping both, are we going to see an Ice Storm? I know that Tristan also plays with Ice Storms. Yep, there's the Ice Storm. So both players having Ice Storms in their deck. And that Soul Ring really helped uh, Tristan there. Let's see what Robi can do. Playing out a Tundra here and a Mox. The Mox Emerald, the green one. So manages to get three mana as well. I wonder if he's also going to play an Ice Storm or perhaps a Disenchant on the Soul Ring. Nope, it's going to be an Ice Storm on, I believe, the Plains. Not quite sure, of course. Yeah, that's a Plains now that I look at it from a closer point of view. And uh, unfortunately, the camera was a little bit flickering during the recording. There's nothing we can do about that now. Unfortunately, there's a Elves of Deep Shadow hitting the board. So a 1-1 one, one from the dark. You can tap it for one black. There's the attack, I think, with the Lana. We're interesting. This time, not taking the bait, just taking the damage. And there is a preacher, so a 1-1 creature from the dark for two white and one. 
and you can tap it to take control of target creature of the opponent, but the opponent gets to choose. So that's probably why Robi wanted to make this trade, you know, hoping that after that he can uh, play the preacher and maybe then Tristan would uh, not play any big creature threats out or when he would play a creature threat out, he could steal it. But I think this scenario is also fine for Robi because now next turn he can uh, steal the Elves of Deep Shadow from Tristan. So Tristan, of course, hoping to draw into one of his uh, swords to plowshares probably to just uh, destroy the preacher. Tapping the City of Brass here, so taking a damage, I guess. What is he going to do? So Tristan here, I guess, asking to read the Preacher to find out what it does. It is a card you do see quite often. It works really well together with Diamond Valley. So Tristan a little bit in the tank here. Going to tap a green. Oh, he's going to take a time walk. So I really thought he made like a, a white and would just play a Swords. He's going to time walk, take an extra turn, take a damage from his city. Going to go to 18. Draw a card for turn. This is really not how you want to use your time walk. I mean, of course, he's hoping probably to find an answer for that preacher. Tapping four. Okay, there's a Suchi. That's not too bad. Remember, um, you can choose when you get targeted by the preacher. So if he taps the preacher now, then Tristan will probably just give the uh, Elves of Deep Shadow. Let's first see what Robi is going to do if he's got, for example, a Disenchant on the Suchi. We will just have to wait and see. I mean, he's got four mana because of the Llanowar Elves, and four mana is actually enough for this deck to work. Of course, also plays with Sarah Angels that are five to cast. Okay, there's a Disenchant going for the Soul Ring. Interesting here. So not going for the Suchi. Passing the turn. And I like this play by Robi that he's not using the Preacher yet. You can use the Preacher's instant speed. Okay, so he is going to use it now in the upkeep so that Tristan can no longer use the mana for uh, to cast any spell. I mean, I guess in response, Tristan could have tapped the Elves of Deep Shadow, and now he's going to block. And this is, you don't want to do this, because now it's going to die, and next turn, the Preacher can steal your Suchi, unless, of course, Tristan has an answer. But then again, if he had an answer, he would have played it already on the Preacher, because when the Preacher dies, you get your Elves back. So... Yeah, this is a bit of a mistake here, I feel, by uh, by Tristan, because now Robi can steal it, can do it in his upkeep again. Untap, upkeep, then steal it. So yeah, this is not ideal for Tristan here. And it shows the strength of Preacher. It's one of those 1-1 one -one creatures that is so annoying to play against. You just want to destroy it, but yeah, you don't always have the removal, of course. There's the attack for one, that makes sense. So Tristan dropping to 17, passing the turn. And now he's going to use, in the upkeep, going to use the Preacher. Yep, that's it. So if Tristan wouldn't have attacked, he could have kept the... Uh, or are we going to see a balance? That could be a reason. No, we're going to see a mind twist. For a moment there, I thought maybe he wants this scenario so he can play the balance. Anyway, first let's do a mind twist here. He's going to lose two cards. Going to lose a regrowth and a balance. And that regrowth, that's especially painful. Such a good card. But Robi is still in a good position there. I wonder if that's a time twister in his hand there. That blue card, going to play a land passing the turn. One card in hand for him. If it is a time twister, it will be pretty funny. But there's no need, of course, for Robi to play it out now. He's ahead on board. So just keeps attacking. Look at that Tristan already dropped his six. Ooh, Chaos Orb making matters worse. Could choose to flip here already. That would be a consideration here. Nope, passing the turn instead. I mean, Tristan's really kind of stuck here on Lance. And I think, no, he cannot finish it yet. He can put him on one. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. Going to put him on one, which means that Tristan can no longer use the City of Brass because then he dies. I think in this position, it's easy, of course, for me to, to, to talk about this sitting here behind my desk, but I think I would flip on one of the lands. That's exactly, I think, what the Robi does here. And of course, you go for the duel, yeah, because City of Brass is no longer useful. So that means that Tristan only has one green, you know, that's all the mana he has. 
Yeah, this is very problematic for Tristan. Needs a little miracle here. Okay, does he have a balance? Nope, no balance. I thought maybe top deck planes play a balance. That could have been it. But on the other hand, then he would have played the balance out sooner in this first game. So game number one here going to Robby. And now we're, we are going to let these players uh, sideboard. And then we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for Robby, the player on the left. That means that Tristan's on the play. Not taking a mulligan this time. That's good news for him. Starting here with the Savannah, the dual land for uh, one white or one green when you tap it. Passing the turn here to Robby. Let's see what he can do. Okay, there's a strip mine. Passing the turn. I mean, not ideal, you know, for Tristan, but could be worse. And there's the Mishra's Factory passing the turn. So we also see a Savannah there in hand for Robby. Gonna play it out now, passing the turn. So no Lanaware Elves, no Soul Rings, no Moxa, no Accelerators here for both players. There's the City of Brass passing the turn. So obviously no Animate. I think that's a good decision because you're playing against a deck with Swords to Plowshares. You really don't want to lose uh, that land this early in the game. There's another Savannah passing the turn. So now we can also potentially play out a Disenchant. There's another one. Are we going to see... Ooh, a Felwer Stone. For a moment, I thought it was animating. But he's playing a Felwer Stone instead. I think that's a wise decision. So still ramping up. He's playing with three Felwer Stones, I believe. There's a Disenchant. I really hope that in this game, we're going to see Tristan cast a Guardian Beast. Or that Titania Song. It would be really sweet to kind of see that plan unfold. There we see another land. Tropical Island tapping three... There's a nice storm. Yeah, of course, uh, going here for that City of Brass makes perfect sense. Yeah, so first he takes care of the of the Felwer Stone. You know, that's mana. And then he takes care of a, of a land. Of course, there's a free attack for two. But the real problem here for Tistan, again, is the mana. Yeah, and that's, of course, where Urnum on Ice also shines. You know, the, the, the four Ice Storms and, of course, the Dissing Chance that you can start playing on the, on the Mana Rocks makes it really good in that Mana Denial plan. There we see a Chaos Orb. And I think this is a good decision here by Robby to not use the Chaos Orb here on the land. Are we going to see a Swords to Plowshares now? Yep, there's a Swords making matters even worse. I get this from Tristan because it's kind of the thing that he feels that he has to do because he's so far behind on lands that he has to try to put pressure on the life total of Robby. But yeah, now you're even sending yourself back another land. It's looking very bleak here for Tristan, who's already a game behind. Oh, look at this. Come on, people. Ancestral Recall. It's just no fun. I really, I am rooting here for Tristan. I think what he needs is also an Ancestral Recall. A blue source and Ancestral that can at least help him a little bit. There's a Strip Mine. I mean, he could consider stripping here to Tropical, but... The problem is that the deck of Robby can really function very well without blue. There are only a few blue cards in the deck. There's a Soul Ring. I believe I also saw a Sarah Angel in hand. Are we now going to see an Urnum for four? Yep, there's the Urnum. Yeah, you know this is what the deck's going to do. It's so consistent. Urnum Jin hitting the board here. Four five from Arabian Nights. So that can start dealing some damage next turn. Ooh, he's got to discard a card. Oh, and the Disenchant could have been so good here. Oh, this is painful. There's the attack. And I think if you're Tristan, you just want to go to the bar and get a beer. Four damage here, going to 18. There's a Library of Alexandria. Not quite sure how many cards he's got in hand. Not enough yet, I think. But I'm not quite sure after the Ancestral. Okay, there's a White Source. Can he do something here? Can he play, for example, a Swords? And are we now going to see that Chaos Orb activation on end step? No, we're not. Gonna draw a card for turn. Now having seven in hand, I believe, or not? I guess not, or else he would have used it. Attacking for four. Okay, we're gonna see a Swords at least. That's something. And of course, this son is gonna wait for Robi to hit that seven before he uses the uh, Strip Mine on the Library of Alexandria. And now some extra life gain for Robi because of that sword. So he's going back up to 22. Or not. Yeah, it was on 17, I believe. So he would then go up to 21. That is correct. 
going through his deck. Okay, they're trying to figure out the life totals. I guess he had a double attack maybe by the... Um, by the Mistress Factories, could that be that he was on 16, then he gains 4, go, goes back up to 20? Ooh, and look at this, now he can use it. And we don't see that strip activation here by uh, by Tistong. So that is an interesting decision. I wonder what he has in hand. Perhaps he really wants to get to 4 mana to start casting some key, key components of his deck. He's got a lot of 4 drops in his deck. Now we see the activation of the Chaos Orb as well, and remember... For Tristan, this is really tough because he has to decide what he wants to do before he knows the target of the Chaos Orb. So now he's going to strip the Loa. Yeah, probably going to flip here. It's this catch-22 scenario for Tristan where he really couldn't make a right decision. The only thing you can hope for is that Robbie's going to miss the flip, but as you can see, that didn't happen. So he's really with the back up against the wall. Needs to find another white now so he can start casting Disenchants and Swords again. I mean, he's still on a pretty high life total, so has maybe two, three turns. Okay, make that two turns here with the Sarah Angel hitting the board. Oh man, this is very frustrating for Tristan. And I, I think his deck deserves better, you know, his list, but it's just not working in this matchup. It shows the, the incredible strength of Ernamon Ice, and Ernamon Ice is so good in disruption, you know. The disenchants, the ice storms, it really sets you back. There's the attack. I believe I saw a time walk there also in hand of Robbie. So if he has it, he's probably going to play it out now and take the game. Going to play a Lanawer. And yep, there's the time walk. That's it. Robbie winning here very, very quickly, very, very easily. And like I said, I'm a little disappointed because I really wanted to see Tistan's deck in full swing. Uh, because I it is a beautiful deck to Tistan. But yeah, sometimes this happens. Sometimes the game is just not swinging your way anyway this was the first episode of the knights of thorn series and i'm going to show you episodes every single week and we're going to continue all the way to the finals so if you don't want to miss a thing make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell okay and now that you've done that i would also like to ask you to like share and comment all these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, you can also consider becoming a patron of the show via patreon.com slash timmytalks. And one of the nice perks of becoming a patron is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het was, ik het is somber gezien.